Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue again working with Gauss's Law. But in this section, we're going to look at problems that uh, have a cylindrical symmetry. So it's exactly what it sounds like. If you have a problem that includes a cylinder or a tube or a wire or a coaxial cable or something that's long and thin, chances are you're going to have some kind of cylindrical symmetry that you can exploit. And by now, you've probably guessed from the other problems that if you have a certain symmetry, it's really to your advantage to take advantage of it when you set up your Gauss's Law so that the math becomes simpler and everyone wants their math to become simpler. So that's what we're going to do. Before we get too far into this, I just want to make one statement. In this section, and the next section, and the one after that, we're doing cylindrical symmetry, and planar symmetry, and spherical symmetry. And um, I want to make sure you understand that there's nothing different about any of these sections. I could have taken all of them and lumped them all into the very first uh, Gauss's Law section. I could have lectured about Gauss's Law, and then I could have done the basic problems we did last time, and then I could have done these cylindrical problems, and then I could have done the planar problems, and I could have done the spherical problems all in one mega section, but it would have been a you know, two and a half hour uh, lecture or a three hour lecture. And nobody likes to, to look at something for three hours, okay? So don't think that because I've split these up that they're different. There's nothing different about them. It's exactly the same stuff. It's just that the shape of your Gaussian surface is going to be different. And I split them up to make a little more sense to uh, show you how to identify those problem types. So let's get started. Uh, the first problem in this section says, an infinitely long line of charge has a linear charge density of lambda coulomb per meter. And I haven't told you about linear charge density, but I'll tell you about that in just a second. What is the electric field a distance r from the axis of this line of charge? From the axis of this line of charge. So we'll draw a picture here in a second, but basically you have a line of charge it's very long and very thin. It's actually infinitely long. And um, as you might guess, just like when we had you know, uh, other problems, it became convenient, like if we had an infinite sheet of something, an infinite sheet, we had, you, know, you can't really specify how many coulombs are on an infinite sheet. So we had uh, lowercase sigma, which was the surface charge density, how many coulombs per square meter, right? Well, here, we don't have a sheet of anything. We have a long, thin wire, right? So we don't, it doesn't make sense to talk about coulombs per square meter because you don't have a surface. You have a long linear line. So instead, we chop that line up into sections, a meter long, and we say, how many coulombs do we have in a meter? And we call that the linear charge density. And instead of the sigma, the lowercase sigma that we used, we're going to use lambda to denote that. And you know we already know from physics, you also use lambda to represent wavelength and other things. So your book might actually be a little bit different, but the point is, um, with whatever symbol it uses, but the point is whatever symbol your book uses, usually it's lambda, it's a linear charge density. How many coulombs exist in a meter? Okay, so the next thing we need to do is draw a picture of this and see what the problem's really asking us. What we're going to have is a long, thin wire. You're going to have to pretend it's infinite, infinitely long. Um, so we're going to kind of leave it open and like that. And uh, we're going to say it has some charge on it, obviously. So we're going to put little, little pluses in here to remind us that there's a charge. Right? Now, if it's really infinitely long, you can't really add up all the charges and tell me how many coulombs are on there. So we have to use a charge density. And so we say that this thing has lambda, and the unit is coulombs per meter. And that is just the same exact kind of thing before when we were talking about sigma, which was coulombs per meter squared. How many charge, uh, charges exist per, or how many coulombs per square meter? How many coulombs in a linear meter? So it's really the same kind of thing, right? It's more convenient, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So when you have linear problems like this, you're always going to be dealing with lambdas, right? Now it says infinitely long linear charge density of lambda. So we wrote that down. What is the electric field of distance r from the axis? So here we have, you know, let's go ahead and draw something like this. This is a distance r. So this is the point that we care about. So we have a little meter here or something and we want to measure what is the electric field coming out of this guy. Now from symmetry you might guess from doing these problems that if these are all positively charged the electric field, I mean you wouldn't expect it to go this way or this way or kind of a crazy angle. You would expect just from the way it's laid out that the electric field would be coming directly out of this wire and also 